Bend Around the Wind by Skylia. Chapter 41. Standoff. It was not the first time she broke some bones, not at all, but there was a difference between an accidental quick snap and a slow, deliberate crush caused by a strong, unyielding grip. She screamed before she could even think about silencing herself. Spots appeared in her vision right away as the hot flash of pain made her dizzy. She stopped struggling because every single movement sent new waves of agony through her body. The man who grabbed her was tall, almost as tall as Drongo. His scales were deep green, almost brown, but he was not truly reptilian. His pupils were round, his skin too warm to the touch, half-breed maybe, or something completely different. Four thick fingers were digging into Ju Yu's arm, sharp nails deeply embedded into her flesh, blood trickling down her arm and onto the floor. She shifted back into her original form on instinct, pale flesh getting replaced by green, not that the large man did not know what she was already. By the time she managed to shake off the shock of pain, there was fighting all around. Startled yells cut off one after another while guns were blazing. The lackeys of the tall man were shooting chaotically, screaming at one another in alarm. It took some time for Ju Yu to notice her sister, but the moment she did, she was yelling and struggling again. No! B! Get out! She tried to warn her. Her sister was strong, but she was not invincible. Struggling made the pain in her arm worse. Her whole left side burned from it, but she did not stop. B was too fast to be easily shot down, and the invader's attention was divided when someone started shooting at them. She was still captured, she was still in pain, and they were in the middle of a battle, but just seeing Stark caused a burst of relief to surge up in her. Stark always knew what to do, and also because where Stark was, Loki couldn't be far behind. B was furious, her movements fast, but almost mindless. She hacked and slashed anyone she could reach while energy blasts rained around her. Stark took cover behind some boxes. His shots were quick but precise, even if not always lethal. He was hidden and far enough away that their invaders couldn't get to him without risking to be shot, and most of their attention was on B. Anyway, the tall man who still held her captured did not seem concerned about the fight, even if he took a few steps back to make himself less of an easy target. The crushed bone in Ju Yu's arm shifted with the movement, and she hissed out in pain before biting her lip to stay silent. She had to get away from him. Really, Spikey? yelled Stark over the sound of fighting. Another one of the dark man's men screamed as he lost an arm. He was writhing down on the floor while his comrades tried to corner B in the far side of the cargo. You're using a girl as a shield? How does that go along with your big bad image? I am using your weakness. The man rumbled back as he drew a gun from his belt as well. You could have already shot at me, but you are too afraid to hide your little skrull pet. So scared of me, Spanky? Stark asked. Do you try to turn to see what was happening with B, but she couldn't. She could only hear the sound of fighting, the yelling and screaming. Call back that little animal, the man ordered. I don't think she will stop before all your men are dead by her feet. Stark shot back. I can't wait until she's done with that. My men are not so incompetent to be wasted by a little girl. Do you felt pathetic, hanging in the grip of the man, being used like this? She wanted to hope that B would easily defeat all of them, but there were a lot of them even more. Stark! There's more of them! Sent out to search the ship! The last word was barely out of her mouth when the tall man tightened his grip again and twisted her arm, silencing her. She cried out in pain as the broken mode shifted. Do you? This time it was Stark who yelled, his voice angry and hard. I want what you took from me. The man spoke again loud enough to be heard, even over the still ongoing fight. She did not know how B was doing. She could not see her. Was she fine? Was she injured? She could still fight, but she could be wounded. We are way past the point of negotiating. Stark answered him. It was an order, not an offer. The man growled angrily. Despite the pain throbbing in her body and the mind-numbing fear that threatened to overwhelm her every second, she did not know what was happening to her sister. Those words still almost made her want to smile. Because one thing she knew for sure, Stark did not take orders from anyone, especially not from someone like this. Stark laughed. It was not a joyful laugh or a teasing one or any of the friendly ones that Juju was used to hear from him. It was sharp, angry, and incredibly mocking. The way the man's face hardened, he knew he was the one being mocked. Following orders isn't my style. 
Stark answered finally. His taunting made something loosen up inside Yu Yu's chest. There was fighting still. They were in danger, even mortal danger. But somehow, Stark acting like he always did made everything seem less oppressing and hopeless. Calculated risk was what both Stark and Logi called it. They always expected to be in danger, but they were always ready to fight their way out of it too. And they did not just struggle through it. They thrived. Fear always made her numb, made it hard for her to think, to act, to even speak. Fear made Stark mock, laugh, and fight twice as hard. It was like throwing oil on fire. It just made it more dangerous. A cry of pain jolted her out of her thoughts, and it made her blood run gold right away because it was B. It was her sister. She was hurt. She was in danger, and Juyu was still captured like a pathetic child. She could not shift as quickly as B, but she could still do everything she could do. Shifting just a small part of her body was hard, but also something easily hidden. So she locked out the pain and locked out the noise and just tried to do it as quickly as possible. We got up! yelled one of the lackeys, but he continued right away with a different, less certain tone. No! Hold her! Watch! Then his voice abruptly cut off. The tall man's attention shifted for a moment, and immediately, Ju Yu turned to grab hold of his armor and bite down on the arm that held her trapped, now with teeth long and razor sharp. Warm blood filled her mouth as she bit through thick skin and hard muscle until she reached bone. The man cried out and let go of Ju Yu's arm right away, only to grab her by the hair to yank her off his forearm. She was having none of that, so she held on as strong as she could for as long as she could. They struggled for a little time, the man trying to get her off while Ju Yu kicked him wherever she could. Eventually, the man managed to rip her off and toss her away. She hit a larger crate and landed on the floor, jolting her broken arm again. She spat out the junk of flesh she tore off with her teeth and tried to roll away and find cover when the man raised his gun at her. A smaller blast hit his shoulder, making him stumble, and Juyu got to her feet to get behind some crates as Stark shot at the man again and again, finally able to aim with her out of the way. The man quickly gave up on attacking her and ducked behind some barrels. Stark did not advance, but he was a lot closer now than before. You will pay for this, the man yelled. I will kill you and your scroll horse, warm blood scum. She couldn't help it when she started to laugh. It was probably because of the pain and the blood still dripping from her arm, but she had to laugh. You're no reptile either. She spoke then. She was still close enough to the man to be heard well. I have your warm blood on my teeth. You're a Denku. Silence, scrub. The man smiled, but she laughed again. She was out of breath and both her hands were shaking. No, her whole body was shaking, but she laughed. So you're just another warm blood. Stark interrupted. Just another scum forced to bow to the scrolls, are you? He was probably drawing the attention away from her or just trying to anger the man further. She did not know. She had to go to B. She moved, despite the pain, quickly sliding through small spaces between crates. She explored the ship many times and knew how to get there without being noticed. Goza, kill the scroll. The men yelled, and Yu Yu knew he was not talking about her. Her heart started to beat even more vehemently in her chest, and she ran. She no longer cared for staying hidden. She had to get to her sister. The lights came back fully the next second. The half-dark cargo space filled up with bright light right away. It startled everyone into silence for a moment. Everything looked more real and less like a nightmare. Color returned to their surroundings and chased away the gray shadows. Drop your weapons. Rumbled Rango from the side where B was. Ju Yu was smiling and moving again, even if she did not see him yet, because he was fine and he was here, and they had more help now. When she finally reached the end of the crates, the sight that greeted her was both frightful and reassuring. Three of the invaders had B pinned to the floor, while two others were aiming their guns at Drongo. There were corpses around them, four or five. It was hard to tell, as some of them were in pieces. The giant stood in the doorway that Ju Yu knew led down to the engines and generators. He had a big gun in his hand, aimed at the men around B. It had to be the one she saw Stark use in the past. If you're waiting for your friends to show up, you will be sorely disappointed. Trongo spoke again, his voice just as calm and collected as always. I already had the pleasure of meeting them. He continued. You think you have defeated me just because you disposed of a few of my men? The leader of their attackers boomed. I am Raisur, son of Kastral. I have hundreds of soldiers on my ship waiting for my orders. We will tear the ship apart with you along with it, and I will show you no mercy. 
<laughs> he don't need your mercy. It sounded Loki's cold voice, and it took a moment for Yu Yu to realize that it came from the speakers. My soldiers are already on their way. Raisur said as a way of answering. Soon this little game of resistance will be over. You cannot fight them all. And no matter how badly Ju Yu wanted to believe that they were doing well, they couldn't fight hundreds. This time the fear was not so numbing. This time she could see her sister, even if she was trapped. Drongo stood tall and certain, his gun still aimed at the men in front of him. Stark was with them, and Loki was close, listening and waiting. Her fear was not numbing her. It was just an insistent itch in the back of her mind. They were all here, and they were all going to fight. They were past the point where fear mattered at all. There were a few moments of silence after Reiser's words. Then Loki's voice sounded from the speakers again. But this time he only had one word. Dongo! The giant moved right away fast, despite his size. He did not shoot at the men holding B captive, but simply charged at them. One of them shot him in the leg, but it did not slow him down. He grabbed one and tossed him aside, punched the second to get to the ones holding B to the floor. He peeled them off her one by one, his grip crushing all his movements, fast and efficient. As soon as he could, he grabbed hold of her and yanked her away from their attackers. B started to struggle, and Juju almost shouted at Drongo to let go of her, but there was not enough time for that. Drongo backed off from the men with B held tightly in his arms. We're ready, he called out then. Every light flickered, like the power was fluctuating. She remembered then where Loki was, down with a generator, but she couldn't even guess what was happening. After a few more flickers, everything turned incredibly bright. First, Juju thought that it was only the lights turning back to normal, but it didn't stop. In but a few seconds, she had to close her eyes and throw her uninjured arm up to cover her face because of the impossible brightness. She heard some voices like yelling coming from somewhere very far, like echoes in a deep well. Then abruptly, it was silence. She only heard the quiet buzz of the lights above their heads and her own panting breath. She slowly pulled her arm down and opened her eyes when her eyelids no longer burned with bright red color. The first thing she saw was B struggling in Drongo's hold. She had claws buried in his arm and teeth biting down on his hand, but the giant still held her close, not letting go. When she moved closer, she realized that he was talking quietly to her, his tone even and calm, like she wasn't slashing his arms up in her attempt to escape. Is everyone all right? Stark asked as he jogged closer, and only now did you, you notice that their invaders were gone. We're fine, Drongo answered. Um, Stark's voice was uncertain as he looked at them. She just needs to calm down, Drongo replied, then turned his attention back to B. You're safe now, he said. They're gone. Nobody's going to hurt you. She stopped the violent struggling then, but her claws and teeth were still deeply embedded in Drongo's arms. Drongo! Juyu spoke up because he had to let go of her. It's fine. We're fine. She's not hurting me, he said, which was absurd, really. She just needs a little time. You'll see. B was shaking, Juyu noticed. She was hurt too. She had a wound on her head. She moved to get even closer, even if she hissed in pain when she started walking. Stark was there a second later and wrapped an arm around her waist, grabbing hold of her uninjured arm. Just sit down. Take it easy. He said, you're hurt too. No, let her come a little closer, the giant said. Stark didn't argue. He helped Ju Yu to get there, then to sit down on the floor next to Drongo and B. Loki, are you okay? He asked then loudly. I'm fine. Logie answered after a pause, but he sounded out of breath and a little faint. I'm coming to get you, Stark told him. No, stay, Loki said. I'm on my way. Ju Yu stared at B silently before reaching out slowly. She was just staring ahead of herself while still biting down on Drongo's arm, but Ju Yu kept her hand in the line of her vision. B, she called. It's over, she added. Can you hear me? They're gone. It took a few long minutes for her to react, and even then she only blinked and shifted her gaze to Ju Yu's hand. She looked at it for a moment before her jaw finally relaxed and she let go of Drongo's arm. Ju Yu was never going to be able to get used to the sight of her face covered in blood like this. It always turned her stomach painfully twisted something in her gut. We're fine now, 
Do you said again, now that she had her attention. B unclenched one of her hands, her claws retracting, and she reached out to wrap it around you, use fingers. She didn't look at her while she did it, but it was enough. It took another moment for her to get her other hand off Drongo's arm. As her claws slid out of the abused flesh, she stared at them, then down at the bloody arm, and then she turned like she wasn't sure whom the arm belonged to. Drongo smiled serenely as she looked at him, like she didn't just try to tear the flesh off his bones a few minutes ago. It's just me, he said. B looked up at him for a moment, then her muscles relaxed and she slumped down in his arms, resting her weight against his chest, but never letting go of Juyu's hand. Oh god, Loki! Stark exclaimed as he ran off. Juyu turned and saw him rushing to the door. Drongo came through earlier. What happened? Stark asked. He seemed to be torn between wanting to reach out and not knowing whether he should because Loki looked injured. It took some time for Ju Yu to see how, exactly. As they got closer, she noticed that Loki's hands and forearms were dark and red, but only when they were almost by their side did she see that he was burned. Both his hands and most of his forearms were red and black, blistered and charring, the skin peeling off of it. Stark looked pale and a little sick, but he hovered, still not knowing where he could touch without causing further damage. Are you all right? Loki asked from him, looking him over, his eyes lingering on the bloody spot on Stark's shoulder. Are you kidding me right now? Stark asked in return. I'm fine. What happened to you? I needed direct contact, Loki explained. As in skin contact, just like with the crystals before, to be able to harness the available energy. Skin con- Stark frowned. Did you grab a hold of a cable or something? Several cables, actually, Loki said. Every single one that normally leads to your workshop. You could have burned yourself to... Completely. Stark yelled, burn a goal. Literally. Until there was nothing left but a pile of ash. I'm sturdier than that. Loki replied. I'm fine. It'll heal. Don't tell me. Stark started. Then he cut himself off and took a few deep breaths, turning away and running a hand down his face. He turned back after a few moments, but his face was still furious. His eyes locked on Loki's hands instead of his face. Is it just, just your hands and arms? He asked. Yes, Loki replied. You lunatic. He bit out and stepped closer to kiss the other man, holding his face between his hands, carefully avoiding his arms. They stayed close like that for a while, and Juju averted her gaze, looking back at her sister, who was still calmly sitting encircled in Drongo's arms. So, my arm's broken. She spoke up, breaking the long silence that surrounded them. Everyone's attention was on her almost immediately. And are we sure they're not coming back? She asked. Yeah, where did you send them? Stark asked, looking at Loki. I did not send them anywhere, Loki replied. They're still exactly where they were before. Stark frowned at him, and so did you, you, because there was a very definite lack of enemies around them. We're the ones who changed location, Loki explained. What? Dark blinked. I teleported all of us and the ship, he said. But I left them there in the process. You're shitting me. Stark gaped. How far? Far enough, Loki reassured. They won't find us again. Especially since that Reicher most likely found himself suddenly surrounded by space instead of a ship. He's probably dead. Okay. Awesome. Stark said, I mean, you almost burned yourself to death to do it, but awesome. Impressive as hell. Where did you bring us exactly? There was a noticeable pause before Loki answered, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Juyu asked. It's not like I have a star map in my mind. Loki answered, I went as far as my magic could reach, as far as I could see with the energy in the generators powering me. Please tell me that at least we move somewhere closer to home and not further away. Stark spoke then carefully. I don't know, Loki repeated. We'll have to wait and see.